Okay. Hey, everybody. Welcome to... No. I think it's 47. Episode 47 of the Frostwalkers podcast, if I'm right. You I'm are. You are. I just have 46. Because I missed it. Yeah. But, but I also checked iTunes, which reminds me of something special. Even though this is episode 47, as many people are well aware, we have kind of some one-offs, unnumbered episodes. We're talking like uh, the Frost Talkers, our, uh, our podcast about our podcast. Um, the 3DM sessions have their own merits. Uh, so pairing all that together, this is not the 50th episode of the mainline story, but this is the 50th piece of content that will be released to the Frostwalkers stream. I Ooh. think that's incredible. <laughs> Yeet. I think it's neat. Um, Super cool. We've been fucking thra- thrilled. I was going to say enthralled and thrilled at the same time and it turned to thrilled and I was like, no, that's not right. <laughs> um, <laughs> I'm sure it's a word in somewhere. I'm sure. Uh, the amazing response we've gotten this amazing year uh, we've had together. Uh, um, it's super humbling as the DM, you know. Um, and we just recently crossed 5,000 downloads, which is amazing. I don't have words. The idea that not that five, I don't think it's 5,000 different people, but the fact that enough people have listened to our under 50 episodes 5,000 times is incredibly humbling. I it's mean, been terrifying. A little bit, but I mean, like, I'll, I'll be the first to admit, um, like, I, I do go back and listen to some older episodes, both because sentiment and also because, like, do you think I'd take notes while we record? <laughs> what are you? <laughs> no, but so I know I add to the count a little bit, and I know everyone here adds to the count a little bit. But well, I mean, I listen to things without without downloading. Yeah, but that's my. I don't got time to download stuff. But that's my thing. Five thousand people have downloaded our content, and or five thousand times our content has been downloaded, and it's going up by the day. And we're incredibly humble. We're going to be planning a pretty neat giveaway soon in our Discord server. Some stickers, which is exciting. Um, so this is our formal invite to you to join us. The link will be in the show notes. We'll be happy to have you. Um, we're also planning to do some call stuff to the server to make it a little more fun for you. Um, and we might talk about that more at the end, depending on time. So, jumping into it. Sorry, I had to be a little admin-y there for a moment, but, you know. That's yeah, it's needed. It's okay. So, last time, uh, you lot braved the Etudon Expanse on your Remmer has, your Guard Drake, your pseudo-dragon of unusually large size, uh, Hot Rod Flame Sled, and <sighs> Ambrose. <laughs> your Ambrose. <laughs> your Ambrose. <laughs> Yeah, and y'all took to the cold and fought one of my favorite fights we've ever had. The snow, the uh, the Arctic worm, which was super intense. Um, a worm? A worm? God damn it. I waited the whole episode for one of you to make it. <laughs> no, oh, God damn it. Oh my that god. Would, if, I didn't, if I didn't want to give it a serious title, I, I titled the last episode to Don because it's it seemed fitting. If I was going to give this shit post title, I would have 100% gone with Worm. <laughs> that would have been uh, a good title. <laughs> anyway, um, as you can tell, I put maybe more thought into the titles than I should. Um, you guys, Sorry was a bit late, but Sorry is here now. Yay. Um, and she wrote Mr. Floofers. Yes, I love that. Thank you. I was going to ask. Um, and when we left off, you met a Avariel. looked a bit more like a snow owl, like a snowy owl, and had more of a moon elf complexion, um, who, who gave a, like, gave a symbol, and a bunch of mages lowered this huge invisibility spell, and you were sliding directly into the hearth. And 
in Coco's Jaws was Valdis was seemingly under some sort of spell when he attacked your mom. So is she, just, is she just holding him like the Coco way that, like, like the way that like a mother dog holds a puppy? Yes. <laughs> like by the like by the collar? Yeah. Or is it more like how a golden retriever holds an egg? Mm. I, mean, I don't know the context of that last one. So I'm just <laughs> I know what you're talking me. about. I know. I know. Thank you, cat. Very I'm just gonna nod my head slowly and say. I'm just gonna nod my head slowly and say yes. <laughs> yes. I'm anyway, sure I'm okay. um, picture of that now. We open on you guys entering the gates to this city, uh, town, village, village, and I'm gonna describe it for a moment, and then I'll let you go off. Okay. Uh, this village has a lot of immediate striking difference of potential. There are no formal buildings. There are grand tents, smaller tents. Everything seems to be comprised of tents and the occasional uh, magically created abode. We're talking like Liaman's tiny hut, the was probably home for a few folks. Uh, more power. You might see a few like tall like a few empty portals, and if you were to follow them in, you'd see tall buildings as they lead into Borden Canyon's magnificent mansion for our more powerful mages, you know? Uh, this is this whole village has a very live-off-your-back kind of feel, you know? Mm-hmm. For the tents that do exist physically, there are, like, some wind chimes on them. There's a central fire pit in the center of this little village um, that currently is blazing pretty bright as the sun is starting to set in the Etunon Expanse. Uh, it's a light snowfall, but not it's not so much that it, you know, bothered you. It's just giving some, some ambiance to the fading sun. And the wind has kind of stopped howling as you've entered in, and you think it probably has some effect of the spells put around this place, you know? Mm-hmm. If you'll, you feel like you're stepping into artificial warmth. Um... Regardless, there are people in big, burly jackets, uh, furbolgs carrying uh, meat in the form of like animal carcasses that they're ready to repair. You know, um, farmers bringing things in. There's it, there's just a lot of commotion, and that particular avario, uh, as you guys kind of sled to a halt, lowers himself, kind of like holds out his wings in sort of a like a a drop and just lands at your at the front of you. Uh, who would you say was the fastest on their sled? Um, I might say the river has, but <laughs> I don't know. I, I think I the want so badly to say it was Finley with Ambrose, <laughs> just for that image. <laughs> but uh, this. Regardless, we'll address all of you and just uh, look to all of you and say, like, welcome to, well, our home. It's a bit different from anywhere you come from, but I can assure you it has all the commodities you require for stay. Uh, my name is Gail. It is an honor and a pleasure. Uh, and he kind of puts one, one hand in front of the other and gives a small bow. And... He, hello. He gives you a bit of a wave. He then turns to you and just says, "We would like you to speak. It, it takes quite a bit for someone to come uh, into our walls, but we saw your party and the situation you're in, and it appears you do need our help." He kind of gestures to Andre and Finley and looks like you both sustained pretty considerable damage in the battle you had uh, you faced outside. So. At the very least, let us offer you some aid in this time. That's very nice of you. How long were you watching the battle? Just until it, just until it reached our perimeter. We promise we have not been following you. We just well, have I... perimeter watch, and when a giant snow, when a giant snow worm crosses our invisible perimeter, you can imagine there's some notice. <laughs> well, I mean, you seem nice enough. I guess I wouldn't have minded. Being watched. <laughs> well, I, no, I didn't mean it. What? Rowling. No, I didn't mean it like that. 
Well, that's what your tone is. I didn't mean it like that. You had a tone. No, I didn't mean it like that. I swear. Hey, girl. Sorry, sorry, like, gives her a look and and says, back off. (laughs) (laughs) I swear that's not. Oh, gosh. I swear that's not how I meant it. I meant, I meant, I meant if you, you're probably out here doing patrol. And I guess I wouldn't have cared about. Rowan, oh fine. god, I just need to stop talking. It's okay, don't worry about it. <laughs> you seem like a nice young man. <laughs> oh, god. Gil just has his head tilted to the side like a bird and just blinks and goes, Well, all right then. <laughs> <laughs> he uh, kind of stretches out his wings a bit and kind of he stretches out his wings a bit and kind of looks around and then spotting two young kids he uh kind of hails them over just goes eleanor cardell uh, with me and a young moon elf girl a bit uh moon elf girl's about 17 and um at least physically you know what i mean mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. uh and the moon elf woman or girl turns to andre and finley and just goes uh Follow us. We'll take. We will take you to Galena. She'll patch up your wound. Finley wary. <laughs> Finley I'm wary. So wary. I really like his <laughs> names. Uh, I'm just gonna start writing these down. Uh, Any particular spellings? I'll send them in a minute. Uh, yeah. The I just furbol- want to remember them all. The furbolg boy kind of like puts his slingshot in the spot in his belt, and then just turns to you guys and kind of hands out kind of puts his hands on his walking stick and just goes like, your attack on the worm was very impressive. Even, well, I haven't seen much action myself. And Eleanor kind of gives him a pointed glance. We've seen any. Uh, We'll talk about that later. (laughs) 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 Why are we making so many accidental innuendos? (laughs) Uh, Gail kind of crosses Ooh, his hand. I didn't like, think it was an innuendo t- until you said that. <laughs> never mind, never yeah, mind, no, never I, mind. Shit, get your mind, mind out of the gutters. I'm sorry, you guys put it no, there. No, I'm sorry. <laughs> Gail kind of crosses his arms a bit. And Gosh, just, I miss saying that. <laughs> just turns to, to uh, Cardell and Elnor and just goes, make sure they arrive safely and make sure they're treated uh. as guests. And the two kind of nod. Is something the matter? Um, one moment. Uh, Finley's gonna turn to kind of like scoot a little awkwardly to Caleb if he's if he's nearby. Yeah, yeah. Um, and she's and she's gonna be like, "Is it safe to go with them? I am uncomfortable." He kind of pauses a bit and then looks to her and just goes, "If they're offering to heal you and Andre up, he." Take take their offer. I'll I'm sure we'll catch up soon, okay? Okay, just be careful, alright? He nods and puts his hand on your shoulder and just goes, I trust you then. Alright. Uh she'll kinda trudge next back to, next to Andre. Yeah, she's like waiting for a few steps ahead. Uh the two kids kind of nod. And as they walk off, Cardell just goes, okay, so you have to tell me, how did you train a Remmer has? Oh my gosh. And he's like, as he's looking up at Remy up and down, he's just like, wow, this one is very, very well trained. I've never seen one of my brother Remmer has is so impressively built. And Eleanor just kind of turns and goes, don't mind him. He's a bit enthralled. I, I don't mind. It's fine. Are you a Remmer has? You don't look like a Remmer has. <laughs> As the I, two kids take on I should be judge. I'm a really tall gnome. <laughs> as, as Andre and as, as Andre and uh, Finn are being led off by Cardell and Eleanor, Gail turns to Rowan and Sari and just goes, you two. Um, uh, is there... You may need to see our Beastmaster. In regards to your uh, mounts, um, you mean my dog? Decided... Yes, uh, his name is Rorik. He's a very good man. Uh, 
I I can take you to him. Uh, okay. Um, Sounds she kind of she kind of um gestures to uh Valdis, who's probably just lying there, and she's like, mm-hmm. "What about him, though?" Hmm. I suppose that I should have informed the children to take them. I mean, I'm a he healer myself. I actually was going to offer, but then they kind of just walked off. But that's okay. <laughs> Save your strength. You fought hard today, and we would rather let you. F- We'd rather let us work our comforts up than make you have to strain yourselves for that. Oh, that's very nice of you. Still, he kind of looks and just decides. You know what? This will be for the best. Uh, leave him for now. Before we head up, uh, I'll show you the direction you'll be heading. And he kind of points out a certain like, kind of streetway made of the tents, you know? Because if you follow the left, make a right at where the street ends. Just, uh, you'll find Rorik. He has a small stable with our horses and such. Um, so if you allow me, I'll meet up with you later. And in the meantime, I will take him to Serum, and we will and sort him out. And I suppose the best thing to do would be to take him to Galena. He does look pretty badly beaten up. He kind of like, like you know the way an avian might kind of like move his head around? Like mm. kind of a darting motion of the head? To peek. Yeah, like kind of twitchy. Yeah. Yeah, he kind of does that around Valdis and just goes <sighs> I suppose that's <laughs> best. Alright, I'll take him to Galena myself, but I'll take him another way than your friends, so that way they don't end up having to deal with him. It seems... It appeared like he was your adversary in the fight, is that correct? He was Sorry, mounting repeat the what you just said? Well, yes, but it seemed like he was under some kind of charm. Hmm. I don't think that he chose to do that. I see. Well... We'll take him to Galena anyway, and then I will inform Genevieve that her service cleric will be required. <sighs> he kind of stretches out a bit. In the meantime, I will meet up with you very soon. Alright? Alright, thank you. He nods and kind of shows them the first step, and Caleb and Donna are kind of like standing there awkwardly. <laughs> and he goes, <laughs> you two. He no- notices Caleb almost immediately, and has a bit of a war and just goes, Take you to uh, to our mistress, our I guess queen, I suppose would be the right word. Uh, once I ensure your friends are safe with Rorik, I will return, and you will have a small meeting with her. All right. In the meantime, uh, help yourselves. And he shows the fire, and there are a few uh, older Arctic elves who we described a bit in the journal. You know, kind of that. Mm-hmm. So, uh, so. You guys are kind of split up, so I'm going to start with Andre and Finn, okay? Okay. Ready. All right. So, Andre and Finn, the Furbolg child and his uh, moon elf friend, uh, Cardell and Eleanor, take you to one of the bigger tents in the hearth. Um, towards the southern end, you know, you kind of came in through the north, so your walk is probably the longest, just straight down the main street, past the fireball, and, you know. The city is kind of, the village is kind of set up in a big T, kind of cross shape, you know. Hmm. Anyway, um, one of the biggest tents at the very end. You head in there, and there is a bit older than Finley, but not like, maybe not a full-on adult yet, you know. There. Uh, who sees you and just goes, Oh, you're our visitors that I was informed of. Right this way. And uh, taking a few quick looks at you, she just goes, like, Animal bites? Is that correct? Uh, uh, more or less. It's animal. Wait, is it Mormon? Oh, God. Oh, I, no. I, okay, I'm going to go with yes. Uh, Ambrose kind of appears next to you, Finn, and just goes, Yeah, I'm going yeah, to go dark for a little bit. Sanguine shit just ain't my thing. And if you guys are getting something like pulled out of you kind of puts his hand over his throat in the you know, the 
you know, the motion. And just because, <laughs> yeah, I'm going to go dark. I don't want to see this part. And just kind of wraps himself up again and poofs out. <laughs> who Who is this? Ambrose. Ambrose. Oh. <laughs> oh. Uh, wait, wait. That's Ambrose. <laughs> wait. Ambrose is a poltergeist. Is he a squeamish poltergeist? Because that's really funny to me. He just doesn't like the sanguine shit, dude. He's also the baby, so. Yeah. <laughs> that's very funny. I love him. So, um, Galena takes you both to like small kind of makeshift cots, but kind of pulled up. You know the way medical beds kind of have the front pulled up a bit? Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. These are cots, but like through some woodwork, they've pushed the front of the cot to bend up the way medical beds do. So you both are kind of gestured to a few empty ones. There aren't that many people in here, actually, at this hour, you know? Mm-hmm. A few elderly who are kind of, who seem to be pretty stuck there for the moment. But it's not like she's it's not like she's the only nurse in rush hour traffic kind of situation. This is pretty mm-hmm. pretty relaxed. And you smell some nice like I guess like potpourri and perfume coming in from this building. You can tell the Lena takes very good care of this place. Mm. Also uh, maybe like herbs and yeah, stuff. Yeah. Like like stuff they'd use to heal people. Yeah, there's some there's some pretty nice smells coming in from here, admittedly. Galena seems to be on top of that. Uh, yeah. Eleanor takes a moment and just goes, if we're quite done here, Miss Galena, and she nods and turns to them both and just goes like, feel free to run along and do whatever you're up to. I'm sorry Gail pulled you away. And uh, she turns and just goes, I, ret- I want to return to my studies. I've been very close to my most recent breakthrough. She goes, Ice Knife is not a breakthrough, Eleanor. (laughs) That's so sweet. And she just goes, it is for me, Galena. (laughs) And the mood off kind of huffs off, a bit dejected. And Cardell just goes, wait, no, sis, come back. And follows out. (laughs) Oh. Back. Cute. Why do they look like Elsa and Anna in my head? (laughs) (laughs) Galena turns around and just goes, pardon them, they're still young. Uh, I will be a moment. I, she kind of is like pulling at Finn's arm and Andre's arm, looking at the bites, <laughs> you know, taking like, kind of putting her finger on it, asking if it hurts, you know. Oh, oh goodness. Oh no, does Finn have to armor? Uh... I don't know. No, because the bite, I think the bite was like, the mandibles would hit like her sides where she's still exposed, you know? It's Sweet. not like teeth. Gucci. These are mandibles, so they would be at the sides. So yeah. this would be how like your I don't arms. know how powerful those jaws are, but I don't think they could bite through armor. It was probably a no. bite. Like, no. It- the real question was the real question was was did some armor have to be removed to see the bites was the, was my question. Uh, no, I I, I, I I said no because except maybe like your parts of your arm plating, you know what I mean? Yeah. But if like, that's the, the case, actual show that. Plate, yeah, the actual chest plate is pretty much fine. Like your side your sides would still be exposed in your typical piece of chest plate to the point where like they wouldn't need you to remove it fully, I'd think, you know? Mhm. Mm-hmm. So like just kind of feeling in where the bites were, she kind of very motherly, like, kind of feels them over, you know? Finley is very tense, but accepts. And, uh, she probably casts a cure wounds as she touches them, just kind of making the initial sting go away. Uh, and she'd do the same to you, Andre. Though I imagine your armor's a bit less bulky, so she might be able to kind of get in a bit more, you know? <laughs> get in there. Yeah, for sure. So after a moment, she kind of, like, having sized up your situation, just kind of gives a slight nod and says, give me a moment, I'll return, I promise. I just want to, your mortal wounds will have been healed by my magic, but I want to ensure that there's lasting uh, healing there for the skin tissue and such. So give me a moment. And she walks off further into the tent, giving you two a moment to breathe. And I'm going to let you guys take it for a minute. (sighs) Are you in? A, are you a little um a little freaked? I, I'm I'm a little freaked. Um, I'm a little freaked, but not a lot. What what's freaking you out? I never liked going to the doctor. And I, <laughs> oh, oh. I don't want to. I, I don't want her to pull out like 
a needle or something. I can't mentally deal with oh, that right now. Family. <laughs> oh, um, well, are hold on, are they like next to each other on like oh, yeah. neighboring oh, yeah. beds? Yeah, okay, you two are close, and like you kind of you kind of have these are kind of set up since these are makeshift cots she can kind of maneuver them the way she likes you know this mm-hmm. isn't like the actual hospital where they're dug into the floor she can kind of move them around a bit she has a bit more leeway so knowing you two are from the same party she probably had the kids move these two beds closer by and kind of give you some space since there isn't many people here sweet okay um yeah so Andre's just gonna be like oh <laughs> well um if it ever at, at any point gets um overwhelming you can and she just kind of like holds her hand out you can take my hand and focus on me instead of whatever is happening with you oh, my poor <laughs> yeah then like kind of just like kind of like looks away for like a second it's like okay, okay. all right <laughs> thank you Thank, thank, thank. <laughs> thanks. <laughs> oh, it, it, it's gonna be okay. Okay, it's gonna be fine. But how are you holding up? I'm. Oh, I'm a little sore. Um, a little worse for wear. But as far as nerves go, I'm. I'm all right. You did amazing. Oh, thank, thank you. I, you, you did too. <sighs> yeah, I don't, I was not expecting that, but I don't think I should, I think I should expect everything at this point. Yeah, we have a, um, peculiar knack for finding trouble, or at least having trouble find us. Oh. I don't know, maybe it's a talent, maybe it's a curse. Both, both, both is good. (laughs) Uh, As you two talk, there's a little plucky voice that just kind of peeks in from the inside. And she just kind of peers her eyes in, just goes, and just kind of sneaks in more with a little book and just goes, Hi! Uh, sorry, I don't mean to bother you, uh, but I, I... I just really, I heard from Gail, and oh my god, I've never, and she just looks Finn up and down, and she's just like, I've never seen hair that way before. I heard that we had visitors, but oh my gosh. And she's like, sketching Finn's hair. Uh, um, uh, 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 what? uh <laughs> Finn's like, broken. And that's such an interesting color. Did you did you did you do that yourself or did were you born with that amazing color in your hair? Andre's She's blushing. She's an anime protagonist. Andre's <laughs> blushing. Um, I, yeah, I this I, little girl cannot be over ten. I need to make that clear. She can not be over ten years old. Physically speaking, there's no way. Cute. Oh, she's baby. Mm-hmm. Um. <laughs> But yeah. she's like, her sketches may not be the best, and she shows them off though. But they may not be oh the my best. Gosh. To get the idea across. Everyone in this town is very adorable. Oh my god, I can't. I love, it. I love all of them. I would die for all of them. She just goes. My name is Lumith. My mom works here sometimes when Miss Galena needs a hand, and I just needed to see you. Her eyes kind of sparkle, and she just goes, "You're both so oh pretty." Oh my god. <laughs> I'd like to imagine that Finley just did that in character. That was in character. Uh, <laughs> oh, I'm sorry, I'm coming out too. Oh, so mom funny. told me not to do this. No, it, no, 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 it's okay. It's okay. It's, it's fine. Um, it's fine. Uh, ni- nice to meet you, Lumith. Um, she like she dropped the book because she put her hands to her face, and then when you say it's okay, she's like <gasps> and picks it up and just kind of like struggles to recompose herself the books backwards for a second she flips it you know i love her oh, i, love I would remember like, her closing it just goes like i'm really sorry i'm dreadfully sorry oh uh, if you ever need anything uh if you ever need anything let me know uh, what can i do and eat bye <laughs> <laughs>
and she just kind of sneaks out. I love Andre her. just kind of kind of waves oh, as she goes. God. Like, oh, Finley, okay. She really has her head in her hands. She's like, oh. And, Andre leans over and like puts a hand on Finn's back. Like, it's okay. It's all right. You're I've never fine. felt so cold out in a, such a positive way. <laughs> Honestly, oh. I feel that. I really do. I've. Mm, yeah, but <laughs> just breathe, okay? Just oh. breathe. God, this is not helping my anxiety. It's fine. Uh, are you guys good with that? Are you comfortable with that? Do you want? Are we good to swap on over to Sari and Rowan for a minute? Yeah. Oh yeah. We'll get, We'll come back to you. You're seen in the medical bay. Is not bay. The medical tent is not done. But are, are you satisfied with that for me to swap on over to the next? Mm-hmm. Yep. Okay. Jeez. So, uh. Sorry, and Rowan, you two made your way, following Gail's directions, to a far more furbolg leaning Arctic elf, like like ninety furbolg ten elf. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. This, okay. This dude is pretty, and he's also pretty ripped, admittedly, kind of a buff dude, but probably older, mid <laughs> forties look. You know, kind of got the oh, okay. got the rugged dad stubble going on. Um, mm-hmm. And he takes one look at your creatures and just goes, well, I'll be damned. I've never seen folks like that, creatures like that around here. And he takes this special interest in Coco as like he's looking at the colors and then turns to Rowan and just goes, what did you do to get her to her coat to her uh, gales this color? Uh, well, that's kind of a long story. Um, I didn't really do it. I found her in the old town ruins back where we live um there were some hags that were trying to hatch an egg and we stole it um the frost curse yes actually yeah we were affected by that as well um i didn't once we heard word of hag covens we some of uh some of south south some of thamior's men went over and uh, rescued some people from some caves. I guess they had locked some people away in some caves. I don't I don't know the full story there. Thamior tells me bits and pieces, of course. But, you know. Oh, wow. I, I see. We came, but, but you could speak to Thamior for more information, but all I'm aware is that him and some men came under the cover of night and defeated some bugbears and hobgoblins to free some townsfolk from a bigger city nearby here. I don't you know the- guys saw bugbears? <clears throat> we see many creatures in this area, but a guard drink- so- so- uh, Sorry, we fought bugbears. Do you when remember that? Be- sorry? <laughs> when did we fight bugbears? In episode th- four. <laughs> it was early on. Oh, yeah. the goblin on <laughs> That's when I got my dog. Yeah. Yes, a domesticated warg is definitely an accomplishment. You must be very proud. Uh, my apologies. His name, his name is Mr. Floofers, and he's a baby. I'm. Uh, he kind of he bends gets... down and puts his big hand on Floofers' head very gently, though. Pleasure oh. to meet you, Mr. Floofers. And he just kind of thunderstorms, and he likes getting his belly rubbed. I see. <laughs> he kind of like gets under there and rubs his belly a bit, much to Floofers' delight, and just kind of goes like. All right, then. Um, well, I should introduce myself formally. My name's Rorik. I am the Beast Master of the Hearth. Uh, my son, Cardell, you may have met over in town. Was he the hot one? <laughs> I would oh. hope not. He's like eight. <laughs> oh, okay. I'm, hey. trying to remember. I'm trying to remember everybody's name. I'm sorry. <laughs> he just kind of like, you see him have this existential dread moment. He's like, oh my god, I'm old. <laughs> I um, think great. that's Lumif's age. Oh my god. Um, um, <laughs> hi. Our names are Rowan and Sorry. I um, am sorry. <laughs> I'm very, I, I apologize for that. It, it's, um, quite right. it's quite I'm right. sorry. I'm just trying to remember everybody's names. You kind of look, and it's hard for me to no. listen to that one guy's name without, like, just, you know. Everything fades out and it turns into like this weird music. And <laughs> and it's blah, blah, blah. Everything is blah, 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 in the background and it's, it was really confusing. So I don't have everyone's name straight. 
Rory <laughs> just goes, fair enough. Um, tell you what, I'll give you two a moment to bear to get your bearings. Uh, you don't mind that I? He kind of looks towards Coco and Floofers and just kind of goes and shows them a pen. And there's like some winter wool. There's some regular like creatures, horses, just kind of domesticated beasts. You know, and he just kind of goes during your duration here. We would happily allow them to stay in our pen. They'll get plenty of food. We have plenty of people taking good care of them. Is that all right with you? Yeah, it works for um, me. Rowan's yeah. kind of like don't, eyeing don't the feed him after midnight. You know, he's <laughs> taking for a really long walk. You can <laughs> actually see him produce like a parchment, and he actually just goes like custom information. And he takes him hmm. note and. Uh, <clears throat> And like puts that on like a big wall that he has that are all these different notes that he like kind of mm-hmm. sticks there, you know. Also, don't um, let him smell anything. It has the name Mister Floofers on it, and sorry, instructions. <laughs> don't let him. Don't let him near anything goblin esque. He go. He goes nuts. <laughs> he nods and he nods and adds that on. Board, and then just turns to Row and just goes, "Anything for you?" <clears throat> um. She's if kind you'd of like, like to keep your mouth, that's, if you'd like to keep her around, that's absolutely your choice. We're just offering it as a choice. It's a yeah. Hotel. <laughs> um, Rowan's kind of like eyeing the, the winter wolves a bit, and she like pulls Coco a little bit closer to her. Mm-hmm. Coco's um, a dragon, though. These are just puppies. Yeah. Uh, Besides, you got all of us. Yeah, okay. And they're very oh. nice wolves. All right, all right, I guess. I bet they're just puppies. All right, okay, okay. It's, all right, sure. Um, I'm, you seem very nice, and I'm sure that she'll be well taken care of. You could come visit her during your free time if you'd like. It's, it's open it's open all. It's open all hours. I oh, I basically, that's nice. I, um, yeah, I'll definitely do that then. Feel free to stop in whenever. I will happily show you how our process and, um, but just just so that way you don't that way you don't have to think about their health and safety while you're wandering around here. You, you, you they'll be safe here. This is a plush. Everyone around here is so nice. Um, we try to be familial. It's a small community, I- though. Everyone kind Thank of knows each other's names, and we all just try to make life a bit more comfortable out here because, well, it's pretty uncomfortable to start. Yeah. yeah. I... So, I guess I'm just, I'm just interested in knowing a little bit about your town. You said that <clears throat> back during the Frost Curse, you helped to rescue some people from a larger town. Um, have you ever heard of, of Timshul? That's where we're from. Yes, we've heard of the name well. We're well aware of the nearby location. Uh, Hargrave, Duskvale, we're well aware of our neighbors. Um, <clears throat> I've never heard of both of those places. Hargrave <laughs> is where Sylvester's from, and Duskvale's where Nath's from, by the by. Yeah, um, you expect they're not... sorry to remember that? That's fair. <laughs> no, I was just, that was just a little out-of-game note. Um, <clears throat> he just kind of would, would relate to you that the hearth started when some arctic elves in the wake of uh some situation in Timshul that they've kind of dubbed the calamity uh happened they exiled themselves for their own safety and took up their own they took up the core tenets of what Timshul was supposed to be but the tenets they believed were forgotten during the calamity huh so you've you've tried to keep yourself pretty hidden, yeah? Because yes. I've never heard of this town. Yes, we've done our best. The people here are still afraid. They still... We've heard news that there's new leadership there, but we're not quite ready to come back. We were part of Timshul when there were lords, not kings. Well, I mean, mm. I'm technically the princess. Well... Uh, I, oh, that, he like he hears that. that immediately. His eyes widen and he clutches his heart. I'm at no that I am so. <laughs> no, no, I'm sorry, and and it's not even it's not even like a real thing. It's like a technical thing. Like, 
Still, Prince I, Calum, I, I, that guy I, I, we came in with, he's like technically my brother because my adopted adopted mom adopted him. Yeah, <laughs> I have two adopted moms. My life is confusing. He nods slowly and just kind of turns to you both and just goes, Oh, is Prince Calum going to see our our archmage, uh, Alana, by chance? A what? He's a wizard. You weren't there. I apologize. I, it's it's a long story. <laughs> he just kind of takes floofers and cocoa and like kind of very like softly gesturing them, you know, to the mm-hmm. and just goes like, "Give me a moment mm-hmm. to get them settled in, and uh, I will return, and we can talk about whatever you'd like." Okay, I do have orders from Gail to return you to the town center when this is over. So, it must be brief. <clears throat> Uh, so you two have a free minute. If you'd like to take it, if you want to skip ahead, go for it. But if you want to take the second for Sari and Rowan to talk, the floor is yours. Um, I think Rowan's, like, kind of quiet. Like, sort of waiting for Sari to say something. Well, this was neat. Uh, I guess we should leave and maybe go find Finn. I guess if if that's like cool. I'm sure Caleb and Anna are busy and they don't need us or anything or whatever. They're probably busy smooching. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe. Have you seen the way he looks at her? Yeah. Yeah, I have. It's like the way Janice looks at you when you're not looking. (laughs) That's sweet of you to say. (laughs) She's kind of like blushing quite a bit. (laughs) Eh. Should should we be going? Are you guys good? Now? She like starts to prep cartwheel pose. Uh, All right. <laughs> that was out of game. Do you guys do you guys want to do anything else, or can we jump? Yeah, back I think. Because if you guys can, I think you can jump back over. Okay. Uh, Finn and, Finn and Andre. I'm gonna try and mess your name up, but I, it would have been really awkward and not good. So, uh, Andre. <laughs> oh my god. Yes, that. Um. I'm sorry. So it's okay. No, it's okay. Oh, let me. Um, you guys are feeling a bit better. Uh, Genevieve, not Genevieve. Sorry. Uh, Galena has returned with some some sort of tea to kind of chill the cool the nerves. You know, just making you guys feel a bit better. You know. Mhm. Yeah. And kind of put some salve in the bites. Do you feel better too? Uh, and she, once she's with that, just turns to you both and just goes, well, I hope, uh, I hope you feel better. If uh, there's any burn feel, any burning sensation from where I placed that self, come back immediately. I will, I'll do what I can. Uh, I do apologize if there is any side effects, but mm. uh, this is a pretty fairly regular case. Side effects. Uh, is, is there anything, is there anything you need from me before we, part, before I take you back to the center? Um, I don't think so. Um, but you said, you said, uh, you said side effects. Um, she nods. Um, what does that entail? She no- uh, you'll just, uh. You'll just be waiting for your friends uh, in the main fi- with the main fire. Bed. That's all. I can wait with you if you'd like. But, we just don't want to send you on your way to figure out your living quarters without everyone else there. You know, we'd rather you meet up together and then go from there. Okay. Uh, she kind of looks at both of you and just goes like, it "Seems like you haven't gotten good rest recently either." I suppose if 
lots of few nights here will solve that problem. Uh, he is hoping. She kind of smiles and puts her kind of... She's way more elf than Fribolg, by the by. Mm -hmm. um, she kind of, like, puts her arms around the both of you very, like, motherly, you know? And just oh. kind of goes, I'll walk, I'll walk with you, Bo. Um, is there anything you guys want to do as you guys are being led back, or do you want to... Um, can, like, just for, just for one second, Finn's gonna be like, Absolutely. Um, can I, can I speak to uh, my friend here alone for just a second? She nods, at, she nods pretty softly and just kind of says, I'll need a moment to prepare myself anyway. And she kind of heads back to the back and probably gets on a bigger coat. So, yeah, you have a minute. Um, you could hear her wrestling in the back of the tent to look for stuff to get. Yeah. Wrestle, wrestle. Oh. ASMR with Galena. Galena, um, Galena takes care of hospital ASMR. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. Sounds nice. Loving and supportive Galena. That stressful <laughs> for me. Loving, loving and supportive Galena. <laughs> Readjust your bone ASMR. <laughs> oh no! That's a, that's a that's terrible. Like what you're looking for is chiropractor, and that I'm sounded that ASMR with my dog. chiropractor ASMR. That sounded so nice up until the bone readjustment. <laughs> Galena anyway. takes care of you, and you have the plague. <laughs> <laughs> Galena takes care of you, but midway through, rats. <laughs> rats, oh, rats cool. We are the rats. Anyway, um, what is happening? What are we talking I don't about? Know. We just had a goof, and it was great. It was a goof. It's a good goof. Okay. Um, goof, goof, goof. Woo. Um, we're That's so a weird. Theme song for every time we have a goof. No, it's not. <laughs> um, Andre, can I? Can I ask you a favor? Andre looks concerned, but she's like, uh, yeah, yeah, of course. Can you... Can you keep an eye on Caleb for me? I know that you've known him a lot longer than I have, but I... And, you know, he is, he is on it now, and uh, he seems to be a lot more... I guess independent. Well, he was always independent, but a lot more keen to be independent and taking care of himself. But I kind of I worry that he's pushing himself too much. He seems to not have a lot of care for himself right now. And, um, I, I I don't I'm I'm here I'm there for him to protect him from getting hurt but I don't exactly know what to do if he's facing himself. Ah uh, I see. Well I <laughs> Of course, I, I can I can keep my eye on him if it would make you feel better. Yeah, it, it definitely would. But were you gonna say something? Um. Oh jeez, <laughs> this is rare being awkward. This isn't Andre. I mean, it's a little Andre, but um. <laughs> <laughs> valid. You you are so valid. I I just. <sighs> Finn, Caleb is, yes, you're right, he is becoming more independent, but that, that's just because he's growing up. Like, um, I understand that it's your responsibility to look after him, but I'm also kind of worried about you. You spend, it seems, more time looking after others than you do yourself. Um, uh, uh, um, and, and I just, uh, I'm, I'm sorry I'm if I 
put you on the spot there. I just... <laughs> I don't know. I, I worry I... about you. Finley's taken us back. Um, no one... Huh, um... I'm I'm fine. But I just... You know, I... I don't really need protecting. I'm I'm good. I I got these I, I got these muscles. I got this cool <laughs> this the, the, this cool cool weapon. Um I'm good. I um yeah. Yeah, I'm good. Uh, um well, um, if if you say so. I just, you know, I just worry about him. That's that's all. But uh, um, it, it, I, 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 uh, I appreciate that you also worry about me. Not a lot of people have told me that. Besides, you know, Caleb. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're part of the family now. It's kind of our job to look after one another. Yeah. Yeah. God. That's so good. Oh my god, guys. <clears throat> <laughs> oh yeah, Finley's just like she she's like she's taking it back and she's like, Okay. You're right. Yeah. Yeah, just make sure you're taking care of yourself too. That's all. Okay. She'll give Andre a little hug. Oh, mm. she will definitely hug back. As you guys jump, as we're as the scene ends, we kind of cut you guys. Um, we we kind of cut to you guys heading to the main fire pit, you know. Mm-hmm. And as you do, uh, there is a man who looks, who is. Almost so moon elven, you wouldn't believe he's Arctic Elf at all, you know? Mm-hmm. Uh, but he has, like, tiny little stubbles of horns to give it away. That's really the only difference. Mm-hmm. Um, and he has a small a small uh, lute, and he's just kind of strumming it as he's sitting by the fire and just kind of humming to himself. So are we all around this man? Oh no, just on the I was just letting them know like what's around them as they're walking into this fire pit, okay. you know? Okay. Uh, I gotcha. And so uh jumping over to Sari and Rowan, uh do you have anything you guys need to say or can we jump can we assume that Rorik would take you guys to this place as well? Um I think that um Rowan kinda seeing that Sari's like I don't know, Sari's kind of just acting like everything's like normal and cool and like everything just like this, Yeah, no, just like nor- like normal Yeah, just like normal cheerful Sari. Um and she kind of knows that Sari's been like acting a little weird lately. So kind of as like I don't know, gracefully as possible. <laughs> Tactfully? Yeah, like, tactfully as possible. Just kind of asks her, like, Hey, sorry? YOLO. Um, what? It's a new thing. I heard, I heard like, a kid say it in Timshul. I have no idea what it means. I assume it means hello. <laughs> um. Because that's what they were saying while they were yelling at people while they were jumping off of a really tall thing. Okay, sorry. Yeah? You're acting very weird. No, I'm not. You're acting weird. Sorry. No. What? Yes? Where have you been? Uh, she, like, stops her cartwheel. Why didn't you come with us? Uh, because I had to feed Cooper and make sure he didn't destroy my house while I was gone. Not all of us have the liberty of a boyfriend or 
castle staff or live-in inmates to take See, this care is what I'm pets. talking about. You're acting weird. What's going on? What do you mean? This is this is a normal a normal thing that would set anyone back. What do you mean set you back? You know, like not having someone I live with and being alone except for my my dog and my dragon and having to find someone to watch my dragon. Or, you know, figure out a way to keep him locked up in my bedroom where he won't eat like my shoes. I feel like Sari's trying to, like, skirt the subject. I'm going to roll a perception to see if she's telling the truth. Okay. What, can I can I DM say that might be insight? Yeah. Okay. Uh, okay. Yeah, I I'll do. I don't want to turn this into PvP rolling here, but... Um, so, instead of, so instead of rolling, so instead of rolling deception, Libby, just like depending on the number, to say what you feel would be gleaned. Okay. Yeah. Good. Oh boy. I'm just okay. even like looking at what my wisdom is. Is, is yeah, that beats it even. So what? Uh, so I, 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 what to throw in kind of glean off of Sorry here? Yeah, Sorry is definitely skirting the issue. She's not. She's she's avoiding something. She's pretending like everything's chill. She Sorry. She thinks everything's chill. Sorry. Look. Yo, what's up? I don't even know where I learned that. I need to stop hanging out with Benedict. Sorry. Listen yeah. to me for a second. I'm listening. She's like still cartwheeling around you. I know that something has been bothering you. You can talk to me about it. Please, I'm your friend. I want to help you. Yeah, but, like, it's not super important if something's been bothering me. I, it's, it's whatever, you know? But it's not, though. You dis disappeared for a long time. And then you came back for a while, but then you disappeared again. You... I just want to know what's going on with you. Well, like... I don't... I don't know. She kind of takes Sari and, like, sits down somewhere. Kind of like calmly. You can talk to me. I'm your friend. I, don't, I just. I thought like Caleb and I would be best friends, you know, forever. And then he's got Anna. It's like okay, whatever. But then he he got Finn too, and Finn's always by his side, so he doesn't need Sorry with him all the time. Sorry, it's just com comedic relief. And and then you've got Janice, and and even Finn has her aunt, and Rev has Zaster, and Jatai, and all the other Andre. people. Oh yeah, Andre. <laughs> 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 I got caught in the moment. It's okay. Then I have the dragon, and a dog, and I guess a thief mom, but she has kids to take care of and a husband and people. And I had Caleb for a while. And we were best friends. We were brother and sister even. And then he got Anna. And it's like he doesn't even need me anymore. Or care that I'm gone for a bit. Like I disappeared and and he didn't even notice. He went to he he went to a book club with with Angel and all those kids and ha kept having classes and, and 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 he didn't even notice I was gone. I think Rowan's gonna like give Sari a hug and say, <sighs> "Look, Sari." I I really appreciate you telling me that. That was very brave of you. 
the thing is that I know how it can feel sometimes. I had a lot of siblings <laughs> that I was very close with. And, you know, some of them are older than me. And they started to grow up and then move on with their lives. And I, I, it was difficult. But that's kind of just the reality of having an older brother. They get older and busier and... I have several, like, ten. <laughs> and a bunch of younger sisters and a bunch of other younger brothers, because, you know, they just kept having babies. <laughs> the point but that I'm trying... Okay. They, they kicked me out. Rowan, hmm. why did they kick me out? I don't know. I don't know. Do they just not like me? <laughs> oh my god, I'm getting so sad. <laughs> I... Sorry. <sighs> Sorry, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Because you have us now. And we like you. And I promise you, Caleb's just growing up. He's just getting busy. He doesn't like you any less. What? If you were to go to him right now, he would tell you. He's just been dealing with a lot. I'm sure that if you were to go to Caleb right now, he'd say the same thing that I've said. You, you think? I know, because I know Caleb. And I know that he cares about you. Well, I even said something, though, and he had... Well, with the Anna thing. Well, what did you tell him? Didn't she, like, blow up at him a few episodes ago? You, you blew up at him because he called you all over when you needed... When he thought he'd need help, but Anna basically was able to take care of it with her abilities. Mm -hmm. Which further cemented the fact of he doesn't need sorry. He has Anna. Why don't you just go talk to him? Because that's not how I do things. Well, I'm like 86 years old now. That's that's just I'm adopted. I've been passed around. I just, I left. I did, I did, talking to people directly about issues that I have are, is not really my thing. Well, you're doing it with me right now, and I'd say you're doing a yes. pretty okay job. Well, you did ask. Caleb's not gonna ask. Well, sometimes you can't just wait for people to ask. You have to be the one to initiate and do it yourself. Or, and hear me out. I bought I, one. Oh, I am. <laughs> pretty much. I pretend everything's fine. And we all move on with our lives. And but I how does that eventually make leave town. Oh, but I eventually how does that... leave town. Sorry? Yeah. Look at me. She, like, holds onto her shoulders. Take I'm it from happy. someone who ran away from everything. You can't run away. Oh, okay. Normally, I would just sit back and let things take their natural course. But not this time. What do you mean, not this time? Go to Calum. And talk to him. And I think, I think that's a good note to move towards our last scene tonight. You four reconvene, and you see in the fire pit that, not in the fire pit, he's not standing in the fire, no, no, by the fire pit, <laughs> words, <laughs> that, uh, that elven man. 
and he's still humming on his lyre, you know. And uh, <laughs> you two connect with them, and you finally see Anna, Myrina, and Calum walking by with two other figures, a pretty rugged, pretty buff-looking Arctic elf, pretty a bit older than the rest of you, and he kind of has a similar stance to Finley, and he is standing by... <laughs> Uh, by a woman, I will. Um. Anyway, this woman is tall. She has a white, kind of a puffy coat. Different uh, ornaments around her. She has a headpiece with two stag-like horns. Small crystals coming down from either side. Uh, her hood conceals part of her face, but you can see markings by her forehead down to her nose. Uh, gray eyes, kind of. A very, very lean figure. Her hair comes down to her, about her back, but she also has it coming out to the sides as well. And she just see, kind of ends in a kind of a braid down um, by her back. Has a spear in one hand, covered up very well. And she just has this very authoritative motion to her steps, you know? Hello. I'm sorry. Oh, wait. Wait, 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 wait. Are we all seeing this woman, or is it just... Yes. No. Oh, I see. She's okay. She's up with you with the fireball. Uh, the three... Calum, Anna... Calum and Anna are kind of hovering by her. Myrina is walking with her, and it seems very natural for the two, you know? And this other Arctic Elf is taking up her other side, uh, with Calum and Anna kind of floating in the back. And as she steps forward, she smiles and just goes, Welcome, all of you. You've traveled a long way from Timshul to the hearth. I I never thought I'd hear of adventurers from your town coming here. And she kind of bites her lip a bit and just goes, It's an honor to have you here. It's nice to meet you, too. My name is Alana. Hi, sorry. Hi, sorry. My name is Alana. It's a pleasure. Why do I feel like I know that name? Myrina just kind of smiles and just goes, When are you going to tell them? She just goes, Myrina, all in time, but now. She says, Did I fuck it up again? Yes, you did, my friend. <laughs> and she just kind tell of smiles. Them what? I, I care deeply about my old home. It's an honor to meet all of you. And she turns to Caleb and just goes, and my my boy, it's so good to see you again. What? Caleb, oh, well, that's just awesome. Caleb's <laughs> just whole body just kind of tenses up for a moment, and Anna blinks and just goes, Caleb's mom? You? I have another mom? You've done something with your hair. She just like immediately starts like pointing out how different she looked, you know. Anna is enthralled. <laughs> and your outfit, Alana, you are rocking the headpiece. <laughs> and Caleb's just like kind of still there, and she just goes, "I." She, Anna just throws herself in a hug because she was able to rebound quicker, you know. And Caleb just like a fucking just a fucking stick just straight up tense as hell doesn't know what to say you know oh and Damn. you see his eyes start tearing up and just blinks twice and just goes mom and she just kind of smiles and puts her spear down and holds out her arms up and just goes it's good to have you home and oh. Caleb just runs and throws himself into her arms Oh. <laughs> this, this woman just kind of spins her boy around with just all the strength she can carry and just lets him down and puts her fate her her hand to the side of his face mitten still to just go just kind of wiping away some of the tears and just kind of pulls her it pulls him into a hug again kissing his forehead and just just admiring him from every angle. She looks like someone who has, who's 
just looking upon something she's loved for all her life. Oh, God, I'm gonna, I'm gonna cry. <laughs> and Caleb still just unable to process, just was like, I thought you died or left or. And she just kind of smiles and just says, I know, and I wish I had taken you with me, but you've become so much more than I ever could have dreamed for you. And I'm so proud. And Caleb just kind of buckles at the knees and takes a sit and is kind of scooting over to, to Finley and just kind of like looking for a hand to hold right now, basically. Yes, finally! <laughs> Aww. Finley will, Finley will be as close as possible. And she smiles at this and just goes, how you brought Anna back is a miracle I will never understand, but I'm so glad to see her too, Caleb. And she just kind of goes, I can tell you all about it. And she's like, oh my god, it's so good to see you. You're the one who did my hair way back when. My mom did not do my hair. Oh. And she just goes, your mother was very skilled in other manners, Anna. And she goes, I know, but I, I still do my hair all curly because of you. Oh. She smiles and looks to the others and just goes, Caleb, mm-hmm. why don't you introduce me to my new children? You're all part of the family now here in the hearth. <laughs> oh, oh my God. I'm just gonna, can we have like a group hug? <laughs> and I think that's where we'll call the session. Everyone, like, please. Oh, oh my God. That was oh. like. <laughs> This was getting these super strong mom vibes. I love it. Blow me down. There's no one around. Lay back and take your socks and shoes right off. That natural light is so damn polite. Can make you feel just like you were young. Again. Oh. Underneath the rose of tree, I will see you where the ocean meets the 